We're coming down from a solar storm that brought us some decent aurora, but the fun's not done yet because another one is on its way. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. We've been quieting down from a solar storm that we had around the end of the month, but we definitely don't get to rest for very long. We have a coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here over the next day or so, and it could easily bring us uh, some aurora definitely to high latitudes and possibly into mid latitudes. So your aurora photographers, the fun isn't over. We could get yet another show over the next few days. Now, also, we do have region 2757 that is rotated to the sun's far side, but the nice thing is that on the east limb, we do see two new bright regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view here over the next couple days. So luckily, that should keep the solar flux right in the low 70s, which is marginal range for radio propagation. And that's good news for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Switching to your MFLAR threat meter, you can see the X-ray flux continues to be extremely low and therefore by proxy the solar flux continues to be low. We did have a little bit of flare activity right around the 25th or so. This was kind of some bumps and wiggles you see there. This was due to region 2757 and also that bright region from solar cycle 25 when they were a bit more active. Since then they've calmed down just a little bit and region 2757 has disappeared around the sun's far side which has caused the X-ray flux and therefore by proxy the solar flux to go down just a little bit. But we are hanging on to that hairy edge of marginal for radio propagation, so this is still good news for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Switching to our solar storm conditions, as you can see back at the end of January, we were pretty quiet until about the 29th when we got hit by a weak solar storm and that bumped us up to unsettled conditions and that was followed by a pocket of fast solar wind and that bumped us up to active conditions. And hey, we actually got some decent aurora, especially at high latitudes and even just a wee bit down at mid latitudes. And then that settled down after about the 30th and 31st. You can see we've kind of settled back down to unsettled to almost quiet conditions, but this isn't going to last because in the next day or so we could get hit with some more fast wind and that might actually bump us back up to unsettled, if not active conditions, and we could get some more aurora. And although these solar storms as of late have not been very strong, believe it or not, it's still brought some gorgeous aurora views to many parts of the world, especially at high latitudes, but even just a little peak at mid latitudes. So we'll start off this show with this gorgeous shot from Finland. And it was seen in multiple places in Norway. It was also seen all over Sweden. And the aurora even came down to Scotland. It was seen multiple places in Scotland as well. And as we travel over the Atlantic, it was seen in Iceland. And as we get to the Western Hemisphere, it was seen in multiple places in Canada. Here's Saskatchewan. And Alberta. And yes, it was seen in the United States, of course, in Alaska. And now for your LEO Mio Geo Orbit Outlook. As we switch to our low energy particle environment, these are the particles that charge up the outside of spacecraft, including the solar arrays that then can cause discharges and electrical short circuits. You can see strong fluxes in and around the geo orbits that even penetrate down into the Mio orbits. And you're continuing over the past couple days to see these injections in the pre-dawn hours. So you satellite operators, especially in the pre-dawn region, expect to contend with these surface charging issues. And that could easily extend over the next couple days because we have yet to get maybe some more solar storming. Now as we switch to our higher energy particle environment, these are the particles that actually penetrate to the interior of the spacecraft and can cause electronic uh, upsets and, and anomalies. We are also seeing some enhancements in inside of the geo orbits and these are going to continue. We even see a little bit of enhancement at the LEO orbits. So you satellite operators and anybody dealing with space traffic expect to have to contend with both internal charging and uh, surface charging issues easily over the next couple days before things begin to calm down.
switching to our moon, we're coming out of the first quarter on our way to a full moon, with the full moon being on the ninth. So you night sky watchers, if you want to see those dim objects in the sky, or possibly chase aurora, you're going to have this bright companion to contend with. So make sure you check your local rise and set times. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun pretty much from the side. And when you look at the sun, you can see a finger-like coronal hole coming down from the north. That region is rotated into Earth view, and it looks like it could bring us a pocket of fast solar wind that could give us maybe a chance for some storming here in about 10 days or so. So we're going to keep our eyes on that. Now behind that, you can see several bright regions. Now these regions aren't really active enough to be sunspots, so most likely they're not, but they are beginning to rotate into Earth view, and even though they're not actively flaring, they are uh, boosting that solar flux and probably keeping that flux into the marginal range for radio propagation, and that will continue easily over this next week. So you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, it looks like you're in luck. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with up to about a 40% chance of a major storm. Now, at mid latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 30% chance of active conditions, so we could get some decent aurora even down to mid latitudes for a short while. But the storming should begin to start calm calming down as we approach the weekend, and then by the time we hit next week, everything should be quiet once again. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have a spotless sun right now, and this should make you GPS users on Earth's day side very happy because we have no risk for radio blackouts. However, we do have a couple bright regions on the Earth-facing disk, and they are boosting the solar flux. We are managing to stay in the low 70s uh, for uh, solar flux, which means marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side, and these conditions will easily continue over this week. Now, also because we are at solar minimum, we do have a higher cosmic ray flux than we normally would have. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew, who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So although the space weather has been calming down since the solar storm that we had back at the turn of the month, it doesn't look like we get to rest on our laurels for very long because we have a coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone and it should be sending us some fast solar wind again here in the next day or so, which could bring us some decent aurora at high latitudes and possibly down to mid latitudes for just a skosh. So your aurora photographers definitely keep your batteries charged. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, we have a couple bright regions on the Earth-facing disk, and we have a couple more that are rotating into view from the sun's far side, and that is managing to keep that solar flux up. So although the radio propagation isn't great this week, at least we're still staying in the marginal range. Now, as far as you GPS users are concerned, well, we have a spotless sun, and that's good news because we have no chance for radio blackouts on Earth's day side, and as long as you stay away from the dawn dust terminators and away from aurora when that solar storm hits, your GPS reception should remain top-notch. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.